For this one, we're going to take a look at how to change the room perspective in Photoshop. Now, what we can do in Photoshop, we can actually match this background with this one right here by getting ourselves the ruler. You just want to hold shift, drag this down until you reach the bottom of the canvas. Now, if we have a look at the top, it will tell us the exact height of the floor on this background right here. With this information, we can actually clear this and do the same for the second one. So we just want to hold shift, drag this down until we get 433. You can then move this down until you reach the bottom. And then from here, we're going to press Control or Command and R to get ourselves the ruler. And you just want to get yourself a guideline. And now we have a reference to how far we should move it down. Now, this one is a little bit too extreme because if we moved it this far down, and you've also got to consider the actual resolution, it's going to look very odd. So we're going to go roughly a little bit higher than this to around, let's say, here. Now from here, in order to actually warp this room, you just want to unlock this layer so you can actually edit it and then convert this into a smart object. From here, we can go to edit and you want to go down to the perspective warp right here. What this will do is it will give you the options to be able to left click, drag this out and get yourself the very first grid on the back wall right here. What you want to do is you want to also hold Alt Option key and then scroll up and you just want to match the corners to the corners of the room. And then the bottom area as well. Once you've got yourself the very first grid, we can zoom back out. You can just left click, get yourself another one right next to it. And the cool thing about this is that if you left click, you can hover over the other edge and this will connect it up. And now you just want to match this one with the wall as well. We're going to use the skirting board as a guideline and the roof at the top as well. We can do the same for the left side as well. Left click, connect it up and then drag this one up as well. Now you also want to make sure that the grids go outside of the canvas. We can do the top area as well, connect it up, and then the bottom area as well. We're just going to once again move this one further out and make sure it's outside of the canvas. Right about here, and then right about here as well. Now, once you're happy with your grid, all you need to do now is go to warp at the top, and then we're just going to drag this down until you get close enough to the guideline. You want to make sure that you alternate between left and right. And then we're just going to change this one slightly, move this one a bit further down. Same for this one as well. So I would say anywhere around here looks good. All we need to do now is press OK and apply the changes. Now you're probably wondering what exactly can we do about this empty area? And for this, we're just going to use the selection tool, get yourself a selection, and we're going to use the generative fill and click on generate. This will just fill in that missing area with Firefly. Once it's finished, we can zoom back in. And then now if we go onto the second image, we can remove the background and then drag this one onto the second project. We're just going to press Control or Command and T, upscale the person until they look fairly normal size. So right about here, and there we go. As you can see, this is looking a lot better than what it would look like before. And that's pretty much it. That is how you change the perspective 